we are going to talk about one of the ways in which our atmospheric scientists here at Argonne National Laboratory are hoping to solve climate change. As you may know, in order to mitigate the effects of climate change, a transition away from fossil fuel-based energy sources to clean, renewable energy, such as wind power, is key for ensuring that our future climate is inhabitable for our children. In response to this need, the Biden administration's goal was to have 30 gigawatts of energy output available by 2030, or enough to power 10 million homes. As a part of achieving this goal, one of the key questions that scientists are asking is, where do we place these wind farms to get the most energy to power our homes? Currently, scientists use weather forecasting models to determine the amount of wind that is available to the atmosphere to use as energy. However, these forecast models struggle to forecast the amount of wind at the height of the wind turbine. This makes it difficult for communities to determine where to place these wind farms. Therefore, Argonne scientists such as myself are collecting more wind data to help us improve our wind forecasts to help us transition to a clean energy future. This research will help save lives by mitigating the worst effects of climate change that are currently being caused by carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels. Now, measuring the winds at the level of the wind turbine is not an easy task, as placing these instruments hundreds of meters in the atmosphere typically takes quite a bit of a, quite a, bit of a, a very large tower to put it on, then you have to get contractors and pay a lot of money to put it up there. So therefore, one of the ways in which we collect the wind data at the wind turbine's height is to use a piece of technology here called a Doppler LiDAR. What a Doppler LiDAR does, it shoots a laser beam into the sky. This laser beam is then reflected all the stuff in our atmosphere, from tiny fragments of dust to raindrops. This reflection is then recorded by the Doppler LiDAR to get the air motions and the amount of stuff that's in our atmosphere. Doppler LiDARs are currently deployed as a part of the Department of Energy's Third, third Forecast Wind Improvement Project, or WFIP-3. The purpose of this field experiment is to make wind measurements in offshore regions for the express purpose of improving our wind energy forecasts for offshore wind farms. However, Doppler LiDARs in this experiment are primarily deployed along coastlines and are typically only measuring the winds in the column above the LiDAR. With these typical measurements, we get the measurements of winds above the LiDAR every few seconds. However, we, we're, we are most interested in measuring the winds offshore since that's where we need the data from the most to improve our wind offshore wind forecasts. Lighters can be told to scan the coast, but this takes more time to do as it has to sweep around like this. So that in total could take up to two or three minutes depending on how many of these sweeps you're doing it to try to get the picture of the winds. So this is key, as not only we're interested in improving wind speed forecasts, we're also interested in knowing how much turbulence is present at the wind turbine level. So turbulence is when you have these small scale up and down motions that occur in the atmosphere. And they're usually, they're associated with changing winds with height. So this causes a headache for travelers. You're in an airplane, you're going is because it's approaching some of these changing wind speeds with height that causes it to shake. But this could also damage wind turbines because you have an uneven forces on the top versus the bottom of the blade that actually could cause it to shear. So therefore, we also need to have frequent wind observations to characterize this turbulence so we can capture these wind speed changes that happen on the order of fractions of a second. So we need to make a trade-off between scanning winds further away and over a larger area or capturing these quick changes in wind speed for studying turbulence. But what if we could tell this LIDAR where to scan when, when these higher turbulence conditions are occurring, when we can make these decisions automatically? This is the subject of current research that I'm leading at our Nantucket-based field observation site for W53. To do this, I'm using a piece of new technology here on the left here called the Waggle node that is developed by Argonne National Lab. The Waggle node is what we call an edge computer, which operates in the field. It is able to operate outdoors at the point of the instrument. And not only that, but it's capable of running software that the scientist needs for data analysis and then sending that data back to the cloud. So what I do is have the LiDAR perform standard wind measurements but look at the turbulence over the column, then the waggle node will look at these measurements and see if there's a lot of turbulence in the air. If it is, then it will perform an offshore scan to get the two-dimensional view of winds offside the coast. This sci helps scientists provide a clearer picture of the winds that are occurring off of the coast. For example here, on the left here, I show the, wi I show the wind measurements that are available by just a current, by the default scanning pattern where we're pointing vertically. And this is a time series of wind speed and direction for a, for a given time period when one, of the, when one of these high turbulence events was occurring. The waggle node they actually detected that there was a high amount of turbulence present during this gray portion here. And then it told the LIDAR to do a horizontal scan like this across the coast. Now, 
what, we show, what it shows here on the right is a plot here where the LIDAR on the top left corner, it shows a plot of wind speed with the uh, hotter colors being higher wind speeds and the arrows showing south, showing the direction of the flow. And we can see the, from the bottom right here, we have uh, these uh, darker red colors indicating higher wind speeds from you know, 10 meters per second that would translate to about 22 miles per hour versus on the top left, we have wind speeds closer to 15 miles per hour when we're at the coast when we're actually onshore versus 22 miles per hour onshore. So this can make a big difference in our wind energy calculations. So what this basically tells us is that our, is that the, the coastal observations alone are not sufficient to improve our wind, ener wind energy forecasts. We need to have this information on the offshore, but this also tells us a way that was, we are able to get a better picture of the winds that are occurring offshore. So what does this all mean for future generations? It means that scientists at Argonne are hard at work collecting data to help the United States transition to a clean energy future. Doppler LiDAR networks are being used throughout the country to get a better picture of where the wind is blowing in our atmosphere. This data is then used to empower communities to place wind farms where there's a high amount of wind energy available. Ultimately, this research will help us transition to a bright, sustainable future where we're no longer reliant on fossil fuels for energy and help save lives in vulnerable communities.